Okay, today I'm going to talk about something that is very close to my heart, close to my mind, heart, whatever, you know, uh, the heart is a muscle that pumps blood and that is it. So I guess it is my brain, what's on my brain. And it's actually how I use color. I talk about this in my videos a lot, but when my videos are basically five and ten and three and four hours long it becomes probably a little bit difficult for people to pick it up unless you of course see the whole video i think i don't really really believe most people do anyway uh, before i go into this uh, this thing i want to ask you to give this video a thumb up give all my videos a thumbs up it's very important for the algorithm now if you want to uh, and leave a comment and ask me questions that is also great for the algorithm and I will answer simple questions or lead you to things I think it's very important to check out. Also if you want to support my work even if it's just one dollar go to my Patreon there's a link in the description and a link on my channel go to my Patreon and sign up for a dollar or if you do a five there is a monthly giveaway and if you do more than that and or do five i will actually help you evolve your painting skills if you do 15 i will even skype with you or do uh, um, do it on live on uh, on internet as it's called okay that out of the way uh today i want to talk about as i say uh, basically how nature works and how you are going to think as a painter when you do different things in your paintings. So I will start by telling a tiny bit story of how I met uh, color and that was through a teacher I had a woman, beautiful woman, uh, all the way back in uh, 1989 and she taught me to see the colors in the shadows. Because it is like this, when, when light hits an object, the shadows you see is a mix between the complementary colors in the background or around it or what's here. So when you have the orange or yellow, you will always have shadows that are in the blue. If you have reddish, you would, the shadows will be in a greenish area. and, and the whole thing is is kind of uh, a, a secondary color circle which is all the shadow colors so if you so that is the way nature creates shadows so there are no such thing as gray gray doesn't exist there is no black you can just forget about it okay if you use too much black to create a shadow it will be hard it will be dead it won't have that um, that na naturalistic glow to it which you find in the in the um, in the rainbow and in nature. That's why I I put a, uh, a photo of the rainbow and sky up there. Also, in this video, there will be a, another segment where I actually do a full uh, do 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 some painting on the sky, and I will do that with a voiceover just to show you and explain what I'm doing and how I use the brushes and stuff like that. So that is how nature actually builds uh, shadows. I can see it now. If I look at this, I can see the green, I can see the blue, I can see the reddish, I can see how the shadows turn more greenish, where there are more red, and they, if, if it is more against yellow, it turns into the, the violet or the blue specter, you know, orange, blue specter. But there are so many so enormous amount of nuances that it would be basically impossible to train our eyes to see all of them. They actually say that if if you have an untrained eye it can actually see 130,000 different nuances but a trained eye can get much higher like 250,000 and probably keeps piling on as you evolve your brain because it's all about synopsis, all about training your brain to see. And before I knew about this, before I saw this, I could actually see the strong colors, but I could, didn't see the colors 
in the white, you know, when something hits a white surface, I call it white. I didn't see that it was, it was orange or it was yellow or it was bluish or it was, you know, I didn't see all these colors. Now, I, from this woman, Cicel Cobosta, which her name was, I got this book and it's called Palettes of Delacroix. And she gave me this, it's a very rare thing actually. And the book is, is basically a diary of uh, Delacroix's palettes and how he built his, his paintings. And I always thought, you know, bloody well 30 years ago now, and I always thought that I was going to make a whole exhibition from his palettes. Just repeat his palettes, pick some motifs and just do the same thing. And I'm actually starting to become quite inspired now to do that, to go through the whole thing, read this and read how he, how he was thinking. And, uh, and uh, just here, it's very few colors. Other paintings have a lot of colors. Uh, and it can be interesting to push myself because when I paint myself, I use the same, basically the same colors all the time. And it goes from the, I have like um, uh, three yellowish and the orange and I have, it's also kind of yellow. So I have, I used to only have one yellow, one red and uh, one cobalt blue and I did not use any black and I used white. That was it. Okay. Then I expanded more and more because I was such an idealist in the beginning because you know, if nature can create all the nuances from, you know, yellow, red, and, and blue, so can I. And it is maybe is a, is a, maybe it is, it's kind of possible, uh, but it is a hell of a job. And it's easier when you have more nuances. It's like you, instead of having just three tangents on, on the, you know, on, on a, keyboards on the on the on the um, piano you add in enough to actually play the bloody music there should be enough only with these three colors because that is basically what everything is based on but now I use some uh, I use uh, one called blue black and I use uh, uh, French ultramarine cobalt I, I just love Prussian blue and I have the, the um, uh, raw uh, Roembach, Burnt Umber, Kapp, or this uh, Van Dyke Brown, and I have this uh, Roe Sienna and Burnt Sienna, and of course the Alessarine or the Kraplak as it's called, and then um, Cadmium Red and, and this, um, what is it called again, uh, Vermillion. Vermillion. It's basically the same palette that um, the, you know, Edward Munch. And the you know the Norwegian artist. This is actually one of the paintings that I just love. Uh, a sick child by Edvard Munch. The first time I saw this painting, and this is very thick, thick painted, very kind of sloppy. I thought I just hated it. I thought oh, it's just some craps, you know, it's it's horrible. It's it's so dissolved, and because I I didn't really understand. Or empathize with the brushwork and, and the struggle but I do now because I have evolved as a person and I guess what I get is more introspection a deeper form of introspection that actually starts to affect how you paint that is why I remember I had this um, this teacher in art school called Krzysztof Nasilowski. He sadly died of cancer. I didn't know until the last year. He was just in his 60s and died of cancer. But he was such a brilliant sculptor and painter and, and drawer. That was just unbelievable. And uh, he taught me basically to think, to break down the difference between between my personal feelings and objective reality. So he taught me to see things outside the box. He taught me basically to start, he, he set me into the start of a 30 year long introspection which, which has been growing and growing. And I can actually see, I have a lot of different things in my paintings. I'm not a very good drawer. 
uh, it's a lot of things that I could be way better in and it's a lot of people that is way better than me technically but I can see I have something going for me and that is my my brushwork and my paintings are very personal and uh, I will never become a uh, become a super uh, realist anyway because it's not in my temper uh, I'm too much chaotic in here I like the brushwork but I also like some structure but I will never become a good photorealist when people say to me you know they say oh you your paintings looks like photos and no you know maybe they do that because in many of them I ask you actually use photo and photo work I also do photography uh, as a basis for my paintings but I don't use a projector or any anything like that to to sketch I just build them from the ground up and uh, start if you have seen my videos you can see how I start there is no I just look and measure a little bit and then I start so so if you put the photo on top of the painting it wouldn't be the same it just looks the same it's almost like you are it's a it's almost like I, I, I you should play play a piece of music what the hell is that a piece of music from from Beethoven and you would try to, to do it exactly as Beethoven did. Now, that would be very hard because you don't really know but how he did it. But uh, So, there will always be this subjective uh, rendition or subjective interpretation when you go from, from, um, from seeing something to putting on a canvas. I can't really paint anything if I don't have anything to see. So, I'm basically a bad copy machine. That is what I do. And I also add a lot of texture and a lot of uh, things that you don't get in the photo. And people say, oh, why do you paint like this? You could take a photo. Now, that is missing the point, darling, or man. Uh, the point with painting is paint. It's, it is building things until it's, it's almost physical. That is, that is painting, okay? You, 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 it's like saying, why do you sculpt? You could do a... What the hell is that sound? So annoying. Somebody sending me messages or something. Stop doing that! Ugh. That was something. Uh, I'm just turning off the sound. So. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, so that is what painting is about. But when it comes to to co the color circle and comes to I bring is this techno mala I guess there will be a co you see the color circle is the same as the rainbow and if you understand how the rainbow works and how nature actually builds color you you will know oh, no problem starting to see it and that is the biggest mistake the amateur do they don't really see they don't really see uh, the colors, they, they, they basically, it's very limited, very limited in colors. Let's see if I can find a bloody um, color circle here. Now, if you want to learn color, you would go to the Impressionists or maybe even Rembrandt and stuff like that. Uh, I was hoping to find a color circle. But right now I see the color circle and everything I see, so it's not really a problem. Uh, my, my palette also reflects the color circle in the way I put up the colors, so that I have a nice piano to work with. I also use these, um, I also use this swine, um, swine, uh, made of swine here. Uh, what is it called? Um, yeah, it's Da Vinci, but it's not what I'm after. It's a name, uh, bristles or whatever. Uh, and it, they, what I do when I paint, I basically, very often when I, if I put in huge or thick cars, I kind of just grab the paint. I grab the paint like this, and I grab paint here, and I grab some reddish, maybe, and then I grab some more white and then I grab some yellow and then maybe some blue and I kind of try to mix the colors on here and then I push that on and in all these like all the hairs 
we're kind of making a micro, basically a micro rainbow. And then the colors start to kind of work up against each other and create a very natural feel to them. Now, I exaggerate colors, so I, I'm probably a closet impressionist. Uh, and that is maybe also, I'm going to go back to Delacroix. Le Delacroix, which I fell in love with also because of that woman, uh, Cecil. Uh, that was Sand and Chopin. It was a some very beautiful story actually about Delacroix and Sand and Chopin. He painted a portrait of, of uh, Sand, which was uh, which was this uh, uh, musician. Uh, now here in, in the portrait is who's it again? It's um, it's um, Chopin. Was it Chopin? 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 Portrait of, oh no, that was wrong. Pagini. Now it's a different portrait then. I couldn't find it now. Anyway, uh, the point is that uh, here I'm also going to show you one of my favorites. It's Norwegian artist. You see how they build the thick colors and, and basically you see the green and you see the red and you see all the colors are just mixed in to create this this very lively surface. Um, so that is how you have to think when you, Halfdan Gideus, he actually died when he was 21, it's a very sad story. He, uh, they say he chewed on some grass and he got this, this infection in his intestines which killed him. And when he, he knew that he was about to die, he said, oh, I was, I was supposed to make so many paintings and do so much with my life and then sadly he died 21 years old. And as we say in Stoic philosophy, memento mori, remember you will die. And um, that is also one of the reasons that I should get my ass going and actually start painting the, the uh, Delacroix uh, exhibition and other things that I've been thinking about for many, many years. Uh, I wonder if I forgot something. Um, anyway, uh, so as I say, if you want to create live shadows, you have to take the complementary colors and you have to mix them like one third the other way, this way or that way, compared to what colors are in the object in the light area. If you want the light area and you have this background color, and then you have the shadow. The shadow on the apple will be a mix between the background color and the color in the highlights. So these two will actually be mixed together to create a natural uh, shadow. That is how you do it. Now in the next segment in this video, I'm just going to do a voiceover when I paint the sky and uh, explain a little bit how, what I do. Uh, I think a sky should actually do it. I could of course do other things too, like a portrait or, or stuff like that, but I can do that later when I actually start, because I'm going to start painting some small portraits, which is very focused. And try, because I get so many people ask me about um, how, I use, uh, how I mix uh, skin color. And it's basically the same principle as if you paint an apple. There is no difference between painting an apple or painting skin. It's just different colors. It's the same principle. It's the same highlight and you see the blue and you see the green and the red and the, all the different colors. There is no such thing as... Um, as uh, um, there is no such thing as um, flesh tint. And I remember me and, and, um, and um, Cecil was laughing so much about that back then. And it's just uh, funny to think about the flesh tint, like you could buy flesh on a tube. It's not how it works. Uh, it works like this, you know, in the high areas, it will probably be in the, in the, 
in a more reddish or yellowish or depend what light, what skin color. It depends on so many things. Uh, how, the difference between painting a black person from uh, basically the elfin bin, uh, you know, the Ivory Coast and a uh, pale uh, redhead from Ireland is just day and night. It's like painting a red apple and a green apple. The principle is the same, but the neons, the, 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 the way you work on the palette is totally different thing. On a black person, I will work in a darker area. On a light person, I will work in the, in the bright areas. And I will also use, of course, the bluish and the reddish. And I wouldn't like, oh, he's black, so I'm just going to pour in a lot of uh, uh, Van Dyck brown because that is how his skin looks. I actually painted a black person from, from uh, Ivory Coast many, many years ago when I went to art school. And it was the same principle, you know, it's no difference. It's just different neons on the palette. So we just have to learn to paint and you have to learn to see. You have to go around and look at walls, look at shadows and think, what color is in that shadow? I can see it now on the wall over there. I have light there, I see there is kind of a, uh, different nuances, depends where the light is, but over there in the shadows, you can clearly see it is in the, in the, the bluish and, and these kind of nuances, and there is more in the reddish and stuff like that. That is what you have to look for. And that is what I'm going to do now and teach you in the, or talk about, talk about in the next segment. So I hope you stick around and watch it, and um, as I said in the beginning, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, share my videos with your friends on social media and stuff, because it's very important to me, it's very helpful, and um, it's really hard to get into the algorithm, because my, my, I had a different channel and was hacked, I was a little bit deeper into the algorithm, so it's very hard to get traction again actually on it on on my stuff so please help me with that and i see you in the next segment hope this helped a little bit and cleared up some stuff you can also ask me questions in description in this video okay here we are uh, in for a treat it will last for a half an hour or something like that and the first thing i want to do is to say i forgot something of course i did forgot say uh, i forget something uh, both Delacroix and uh, the classics or the Impressionist were very inspired by, by, the, by Goethe's uh, color teachings and the color circle. You also have something called Itten's color theories. Uh, I think Goethe was, is the one you would go for because he talks a lot about the, the clean colors and, and he really studied the subject. He wasn't just an author and uh, and a scientist, but he was also a scientist and, and one of the greatest people which actually lived. Now, that aside, I always tend to forget something when I start uh, talking because, as I say, my videos, uh, when I do talking videos, I, I don't plan. I plan a little bit, but I just take it as it comes. To me, that is the best way to do it because it feels very natural. Uh, I can see my hands move a lot and my face <laughs> move a lot and I actually tried to take a photo from the video and it was almost impossible to find one because I move around so fast that I, I can't really stop the video and take a screenshot fast enough. Anyway, uh, as you can see on my shoulder, I have uh, tattoos of uh, nature and flowers and when I got the tattoo, I was very conscious of telling the the guy who tattooed me that uh, he was going to do what nature does and not create too much um, um, lines and stuff like that to make it more slide into my skin i think that is a very nice way to look at it because that is actually what colors do as you can see here <coughs> sorry as you can see here i am now doing the sky and you see the blue and you see the greenish but also in the blue i have kraplak 
I have the Alsarin uh, because that is a very nice complementary color to the greenish bluish in the more light areas as you can see now I'm actually using I'm I'm here I'm uh, when I'm painting the the sky behind there I'm kind of lay, laying some more pressure on the the canvas is to keep it down because in the light areas I will actually do it more um, I will hold the pencil a little bit lighter so I don't push the colors into one another but here I'm just basically doing the groundwork and there you can see I put in some some um, Kaplak or the, the Alsarin and then I go over it again and as you can see I just keep on adding colors on the surface uh, later you will see more close-ups so you will actually see what I'm doing when I I add more thicker layers uh, but as I've been talking about many many times in my videos that the, the whole trick is to uh, keep the colors relatively clean and I was as I was talking about when I, when I had my sit down I put the colors up against each other exactly as nature does if you understand how nature builds color or light the light in the different elements who actually basically creates everything we see uh, you can actually see it in stars a red star I think a red star has a lot of iron a blue star would have a lot of uh, hydrogen or uh, stuff like that and 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 the different elements will will actually burn in different colors that is of course the chemistry this is light so maybe I should actually study this more because I I, I uh, can actually um, uh, notice that I have forgotten some some of the things but anyway so what I do is that as I said in the in the sit down that when I use the when I use the, the blue in different neons I always use some orange or yellow depending on if it is more to the violet or more to the to the more greenish blue because there's a big difference if I if I use um, um, if I use the if I use the um, Prussian blue to create a deeper colder color there will of course be more reddish in the light areas around it because uh, the Prussian blue is quite green and if I was actually going to create a shadow say, a, say there is very much red in in the, the cloud and I was going to create the shadow I would mix a little bit of uh, Prussian blue or some blue into the red to create the shadow color in the cloud that is how you actually create a natural uh, natural color or natural shadow if you use black or as many people say Oh, here I put in some gray and I say gray what is gray what is actually gray does gray even exist and of course the answer is no gray doesn't exist it's not a, it's not a color it's the, it's, a, it's a concept it, it is a it's a concept that covers all the things that people aren't able to see what colors they are but if you train your eyes to see the shadow colors you will realize that it isn't gray it is always against the green or against the blue 
or against the red depends you know if you have a tree uh, and the sun is hitting the tree uh, and the leaves are green if you really look in where the light hits your brain will tell you oh it's green but if you actually see in the light it is actually red there's some reddish light that hits the greenish leaves that then gives our brain an impression that is still green because we have symbols for colors in our heads we have to explain it somehow so we would call it green but if you actually break down the symbols and you start to actually see you will see that the leaves where they are hit by the light are in the reddish or the maybe the orange or reddish and the shadows in between the leaves are in the blue and a deep 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 blue or green or something like that so so that is how you create natural impressionist uh, colors if the impressionists start using a lot of black it would be over okay because there is no real uh, uh, there is no uh, then the light would hit the surface and they won't come back to you a natural color I don't say you're never going to use any any red you can break down colors in the deepest of the deepest of the deepest and you can actually but that is a, that is where skill comes in because you, if you are not skilled and you don't understand that gray doesn't exist and you just think that white is going to be in the shadow or not in in the light just white and you don't understand that that you have to put colors into the light you can do it by by glazing you go over it but the best thing is to do both you you add in the color as i explained in my sit down i explained how i grab the colors and mix them like in like a rainbow in every single brush of course these thing goes fast when i'm painting so you can't really see it so the, what you get in my painting when i paint for a long time is an accumulation of all these brushworks that has that effect within them and people tell me about my paintings you can, I can't really photograph it so it's quite annoying uh, they say that my paintings are much better in reality because you can't really see my colors on a photograph because these things disappear and not to to uh, to compare myself with Van Gogh but I had the same feeling when I saw Van Gogh for the first time. I mean, what you see in the magazines is just, you, you lose 70%, maybe more, of what these uh, paintings are about. It is when you see the paintings, you realize how, how important the, the, the pure colors are yeah it's kind of stopped for some reason uh, now uh, and uh, if you if you actually look at the the, the uh, impressionists they always put the colors they they're basically doing a rainbow they are basically repeating a rainbow. Now you come closer to it now and you can actually see better my brushwork here. And you can see all the red and the blue and all the different nuance I put in there. Uh, you might think why only, why overpaints? Why do more overpaints? Well, in the beginning I just do a very rough sketch so I get a impression of what where I'm going with it and then I start to mold it as I go along and here you can actually see I do different directions it's like it's like an intuitive thing I just look at the object and I kind of intuitively know what kind of direction where I have to put more uh, more pressure where I have to keep it uh, light and stuff like that of course, I'm not showing you the whole process in this video from start to finished, 
but uh, um, that is not also not the point it's just to show you how you see here I just and then I probably saw okay that was way too bright so I probably will push that down a little bit now and um, yeah okay yeah but you can see that the colors there are in the green more in the yellowish greenish and yeah and there's some red up there if you can see there we have the crap lock and um, uh, there's some music in the original file there's some music there so see what I'm doing now so I can explain it yeah I, I just keep pouring in in more color there so I can actually just talk about uh, what I'm saying here you can see I'm adding a lot of pressure to the brush because it's uh, actually not that many high areas in this painting so I'm not actually adding in the, the thick um, colors uh, yeah <laughs> I'm playing music when I'm doing this original. I'm gonna post a link to the original file. It lasts for an hour and I just play music when I paint. It's quite interesting. Also in the beginning of that, uh, that original file, I also show you the painting that I'm working with. So it might be interesting for you. Um, I'm just doing over paints here. So it's not a good example really. I wish I actually maybe used another one but oh of course as you can see you see that the reds and the greens and all the different colors here and there yeah there I'm adding more reddish again and you see now how it just start to light up because then the greenish around and the yellow will then start to to make that pop out and here I added more green and another direction as you see it's kind of a dance you know it's all a dance uh, that's why I love actually playing music when I, I paint because I get into this deep flow where I where my creativity just takes over and um, I just start adding more and more Actually, it's quite strange to see myself because usually I don't sit there and watch my own videos. So it's quite strange for me also to to basically see what I'm doing, how I how I mix it. I'm getting more like a like an objective uh, distance to it. People are very afraid of color. That is my my impression. They are not willing to give it that much pressure or no kind of not pressure, but kind of push the boundaries a little bit. Yeah, I'm starting actually to there. You see, with the red in it, and yeah. Just trying to watch and think I basically feel like I have actually told you what I have to, to, to say but see here uh, this is my palette it's always the same a palette is all oh yeah yeah there's something happening and you see how I, I put on some, some more color there and then I start to kind of let it, let it, I drag it all 
over the surface there so I kind of mix the colors on the surface and I, that's also very important that is a very important thing to get a natural feel to it you have to add all the colors on every part of the surface the only difference is that you add more color in some places and less color in other places now in the sky which is blue you will of course more use more of the bluish colors because of course it's blue but you can't just I can't just paint a sky with cobalt or with alsarin or with uh, with uh, a pure blue. I need to add in all the other colors too. So so it actually is linked together with the rest of the sky. If you if you just and there's actually the good thing about glazing is when you have done a uh, uh, painting you can actually uh, kind of glaze in this effect that you get some more uh, uh, colors into the different areas but the best thing is to think that a, a cloud isn't white it has all the colors in it the background the blue isn't just blue it still has all the colors in it and that is how you actually paint it you have to and then you have to just learn how to paint because if you have a blue sky and you, you add in some yellow, of course it would turn green. And you don't want it to be green, you still want it to be blue. One of the, the uh, that is why I think actually the Prussian blue, blue is very nice because if you add in some alisarin into the Prussian blue, you can actually get it up to the more, to the more reddish uh, nuance. And if you, of course, add some yellow, it will be a deep green. And a very deep green it is. Uh, it is basically one of the colors that I, in this, especially in the beginning, when I started using it, I felt that it was almost like blueberry. You know, you get it on the clothes, you can't really get it off. Because the color in, in uh, now I talk about natural blueberry, the things you pick in the forest which has a lot of antioxidants and a lot of colors in them. If you get it on your clothes, it's actually, uh, <laughs> they're actually Prussian blue, I noticed. But, so you can, uh, and the same thing with cobalt, if you add some reddish in it, it becomes more reddish. And if you, of course, give it some more, bl more yellow, it becomes greenish. But that, the thing is, if you go towards the reddish, and you go to the greenish these two will in a way become complementary they will actually be 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 very natural beside one another and they can be the shadow of one another and the things i was talking about in 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 the beginning how the shadows are basically uh, made um, by the mixing of these colors and the shadows how they they are a mix between the complementary colors you see, the background, and you know, if as I said many times, if you have a have cloud that is is um, uh, white, as they say, uh, it is usually in the um, orange spectrum, uh, up against the bluish background, and you can guarantee that uh, the shadow underneath. The, the cloud or inside the cloud is basically a mix between the color behind and the color in the bright area of the of the cloud and when you understand that it's kind of a, a secondary color circle and it is it is following the same principle you, it just follows um, say you want the shadow to uh, orange uh, you will mix in in um, uh, I mean a shadow of orange color in that cloud you will mix in basically I will say you will mix in uh, a little bit of um, uh, orange into the blue that you use in the background 
and then you kind of break it so you create a bluish deeper shadow by adding that little bit of orange into or or whichever color the because there's so many different blue and so many different reds that you just have to use your eyes and see approximately what orange or what blue is there and you mix these two together and add in some white probably and then you in the right nuance and you get that shadow color you can also of course um, use a glaze and glaze it in but i would prefer to have uh, mixed in the in the colors uh, first and maybe just enhance it with a glaze later because a glaze will be of course a layer on top and not uh, integrated into the colors or the brushwork underneath it will be integrated into the to the uh, brushwork and the brush um, um, hairs but it won't actually be in integrated into the to the uh, colors itself You can see here the yellow, the red, and you have the red. And you, but then again, as I go along, I try to link all these colors together. I don't want, I don't want them to pop out, and that is a problem I meet basically all the time. I come to a point where I have maybe. Maybe I haven't um, had a time, or I don't see it, or become too subjective, and the colors just start to pop out. I haven't kind of calmed it down because I can't. I have real problems deciding for myself if I want it to be rough, if I want it to be very sublime and that is that has to do with my personality so i don't want it if you see that there's way too much yellow there and of course i will um, even that out as i go along because it can't actually be that yellow okay and now i come closer and now you can actually see the see it clear how things are built Hopefully I are still painting, so we'll see what happens now. And that is the thing, I, I basically mix the colors on the surface here. Okay, as you can see, I'm getting closer here and uh, I am doing the same thing. You see there's, there's actually Prussian blue. Uh, beside the cap lock here I should have um, had a, maybe a segment too where I put in higher brushworks uh, but I mean there's so many videos where I do this now you can actually see here I, I work in directions all the time on Maybe this, and there you had the red again. You see how it is? I just keep on piling on. And the funny thing, I'm, I'm keeping the colors clean. Because if you mix too many colors, it will become dirty and it will die. Especially if you start using black. In something like this oh I want a deeper color so you you use uh, ivory black or something like that and it will really it won't work it will actually kill the whole thing so when you are doing the light areas you will just stay stay the hell away from from um, from uh, um, uh, black in the light what you do in the darkest areas doesn't really matter when I use black I usually 
mix it in with uh, French ultramarine and uh, alsarin and uh, and maybe some uh, cadmium orange or something like that to break it all down and then I use that um, blue black from from Vincent Newton actually I haven't found any blue black uh, 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 at um, Old Holland, uh, Old Holland colors is the main colors I use. I also use a little bit of Vincent Newton, a couple of colors, uh, but uh, usually it's only the blue black. Uh, I think the I think the ivory black is very warm, and it tend to, in my view anyway, especially if I'm painting skin or something like that. I, I feel that the ivory black becomes too <laughs> too gray you know it's just it doesn't have any it doesn't have that that potency that I'm after and it kind of dirties up the colors instead of kind of just pushing them down the blue black has this bluish tone to it so it it basically um, adds a little bit extra blue and it kind of pushes the, the it doesn't dirty up the colors in the same way but that is maybe just subjective I haven't been using ivory black for many years so I I should maybe try it again maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm just bloody well wrong about that and maybe it would actually give something to my paintings now here you see that um, that might be uh, cobalt, and I also have there um, the Prussian blue. And as you can see, I'm just keep mixing these colors on the surface, just trying to make it, putting them up against each other to create this live, lively surface. Uh, where all the colors just are competing with one another and uh, yeah I guess that is what I do and then the yellowish again on top of there there's so many colors in there you can see it now it's a lot of different colors now this is the groundwork I'm doing here, so I'm more rougher and also there's not going to be any high areas uh, straight around there, so so I'm kind of pushing a little bit harder. But anyway, I hope this video was a little bit uh, helpful, uh, especially the first part. Uh, and I do hope that you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and check out my Patreon. And if you want, te want me to teach you how to paint, I will do that. And uh, yeah, hope to see you there. Hope to hear, here you can see actually some of the finished result. How I have built this thing with textures and stuff and all the brushwork. It's quite rough painting. Okay, see ya. Hope to see you again. And yeah, remember to go to my Patreon, of course. I will teach you oil painting.